voice training questions and answers. It's Peter Baker from voiceovermasterclass.com. First one from Mitch, vibration hum question. Mitch says, is it safe for the vocal cords if I did the deep power vibration hum exercise for more than 15 minutes a day? What if I were to do the vibration hum exercise throughout the day? For say a total of 50 minutes or longer every day throughout the seven days of the program. Is it safe? Well, Mitch, it's uh, good for you to ask that because any time you have any vibration of the vocal cords, whether it's speaking, doing humming, you're still using the vocal muscles, you're using all the very sensitive equipment that's moving around and resonating, creating all the sounds for you. As long as you are very well hydrated, and I really mean that, <laughs> in other words, you've had a, at least a couple of days of drinking a glass of water every hour while you're awake, and that's what professional voiceovers and speakers need to do to keep those vocal folds hydrated. Then you should be able to speak or hum for at least an hour or so without feeling strain. But it's important to be sensitive to strain, to know when your voice should be taking a rest. Professional speakers, lecturers, teachers or voiceovers who are recording long training scripts or audio books know how important it is to rest to reset the vocal folds. That's why any exercise shouldn't be done to excess. After one type of exercise, you should do one that moves your vocal equipment around in a different way. So maybe humming for 50 minutes isn't the best use of time. You'll probably get the maximum use out of 10 minutes. Anything after that, well, you might as well wait till tomorrow just to do that. It's like going to the gym again. You wouldn't go to the gym and just do one exercise on one machine all the time and then get uh, showered and changed and go home, would you? <laughs> That's not going to benefit, is it? So humming, particularly mm, low humming, is one of the best gentle vocal exercises we have in our arsenal to improve our voices. Quite often people hum naturally, of course, when they're happy. It's just in our human nature, isn't it? One thing I can say to help you minimize strain on your vocal cords is to change the pitch a bit. D don't keep humming on the same note. Try to glide up and down. Slowly, you don't have to be violent. In fact, everything you do with your voice should be as gentle as possible. And be really aware of when your voice is getting even slightly sore. Finally, once again, don't forget to drink Lots, keep hydrated, lubricate your voice. Use honey, honey and lemon after a long session. Oh, a nice hot drink, gorgeous. A good reset tool I can suggest to you again is a simple drinking straw in a glass of water. You'd blow gently in the straw and the back pressure vibrations massage the vocal folds. There's a device called the SOVT straw, which you can buy. SOVT stands for semi-occluded vocal tract, SOVT. In fact, I've got one here. This metal device is variable, so you can adjust the counter pressure for your own type of voice. Oh, that's not very long. Oh, it goes long. Or you can change it around, you see, and you can bubble the water or not use the water. If you go to rayvox.co.uk, you can see the science explained. You can buy one of these chaps if you want, if you feel you would benefit from one. Right, let's move on to the next question. This one's from Chris Davis. Now, hi, Peter, he says, I believe I speak too softly, not deeply enough and much too fast. Right, the pen syllable exercise on the course was great. The tongue twisters also helped me to slow down. Putting earplugs in and speaking at the wall helped with volume and the humming has been great. Could you please give me more tips, exercises for these three things? One, lowering the voice, two, speed of voice, and three, volume or projection. Okay, thanks for your question, Chris. Right, regarding a lower uh, depth of voice, obviously we've got an entire course on this. Over the seven days, you get to understand how to fully relax your body, to understand breathing as well, and to do various exercises to help to deepen the voice. Now, it's important to understand that you really have to do everything gently. You can't force the voice to go deeper or you could do damage to your sensitive vocal folds. And you also could end up just sounding like a giant's voice from a kid's book, which 
people will laugh at when you speak like that in the pub. The whole process is all mostly down to a combination of relaxation and breathing techniques, to be honest, and to gently stretch those vocal folds. And you also need to get to utilize more of your cavities, where you can resonate those lower notes. If there was one exercise I would say is the most effective, it's lowering your larynx gently while low humming. So you feel those extra mellow resonances coming from your chest cavities. Now to tackle the, the, the fast voice, as well as the physical things you can do, like the syllable pen technique or pretending to type as you talk, or a good one is talking into Google or Microsoft Word dictate, where you can't speak too fast or else it just gives up, it won't dictate. The best advice I can give people who know they talk too fast is this. Force yourself to stop for half a second at the end of every sentence to get visual feedback from the person or people you're talking to. If what you're saying is interesting, your listeners will want to carry on and hear you out and not interrupt anyway. But you need to get these tiny macro gestures from your clients, all right? Just to say, yeah, I got you. I understood that. Carry on. It could be just a subtle head nod. It could be just the eye contact that does a bit of this, you know? Before you carry on, you just need a bit of that. Half a second is well enough time to do this. Fast speakers don't do this. They just ramble on. You don't know where the full stop is. And doing this stop for half second tip it will help your listeners understanding enormously. There are many fast speakers who just run one sentence into another. Make sure that you are going to be one of those. Now for volume, this is another area where you do have to be obviously careful. You won't strain your precious vocal cords. You have to determine why you are a natural soft speaker. Is it that? Your own vocal apparatus cannot physically produce the volume. Or is it a psychological thing where, I don't know, maybe you've been happy to do what other people have said to you. You haven't been assertive. You haven't stood up to yourself. You may have been bullied as a youngster. It's quite easy to see if you have the physical capacity by simply knowing that you can shout out loud in an emergency situation or you were at a football match and United were about to score. And <laughs> yeah, not recently. And if your voice didn't really suffer from that shouting, then you need to work up on exercises to get that volume up naturally. Another reason that people are soft spoken is that they feel that they don't want other people to hear what they're saying. They feel a bit embarrassed, you know, you know, or what they're saying isn't important or worthy to be listened to. So. If this is an issue for you, this is something you need to be able to overcome. The best physical exercise I can give you is an adaptation of the general low humming one, where you try and find the resonant frequency in the front of your face, make your nose almost tingle. This is the snout exercise, if you've done the course. And you then mentally project that noise out, all right? You get the vibrations, you create this snout, you project it out. You need to combine this with taking really healthy, big diaphragmatic breaths. And a visual tip some people find useful is to pretend you're speaking to a friend the other side of the room, even though they're just right next to you, all right? Or, or pretend you're both at a football match, if you like. One other tip that you might want to use is to wear headphones. Have you done this? Nothing playing in them. Well, you can have something if you want. If you've ever gone up to a friend who's on headphones listening to music or their favorite podcast and they start speaking to you, they will always speak really loud. It's funny, isn't it? So try this yourself. Put your own headphones on. See what your friends say your voice sounds like when you've got the headphones on. You don't even have to have anything playing in them. Okay, look, I've got to run. That's all for now. If you've got any questions for us at Voice of a Masterclass, post them in the comments and look out for a future video and much more on all our courses at voiceovermasterclass.com. 
Hey, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below or watch the video once more, just in case there's something you've missed. Now over to my left, you can continue watching. Just click the video you'd like to watch next. And please click the thumbs up icon to let me know if you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. And if you've not done so already, remember to subscribe and click that bell icon so you don't miss any of my new videos.